I swear this is not one of them. A lot of people have asked me. I actually do get a lot of questions about uh, making a color grading tutorial for uh, the things you see on my YouTube channel. There's three things that I want to bring up before we dive into the actual grading. Number one, 95, 96%, if not more, of everything that I shoot outdoors is shot with standard daylight white balance, so 5600 Kelvin. To me, that captures the ambience and the time of day, which is extra storytelling and things that I do want to show you and make sure the footage actually conveys. If it was a cold and miserable morning, I wanted to look a bit cold. And if it was a nice golden hour sunset, I want the colors and everything to reflect time of day and, and the ambience and everything. And I will show you a couple of examples of this later on in this video. The next thing that I do want to show you is something that I'm actually looking at here on the screen. We got this camera here on the stump, which kind of reminds me of something that I normally <laughs> nag on you guys about, is whenever you're using a monitor, which I really think you should if you're shooting log, make sure that you use the same or very similar conversion lot on the monitor for monitoring as the one you're planning on using in post when you're converting your footage from log to Rex 9. And I got some examples of that here too, that I'm going to show you just how much closer and how much better things will look if you expose based on the actual conversion lot that you're using. Sometimes you have to overexpose a tiny bit and bring it down in post, but for the most part, if you do things correctly and use the same lot and everything, you will get like 80, 90, is oftentimes 100% <laughs> there when just apply the same lot in post. So that's going to save you a lot of time and it's also going to make uh, things uh, look a lot better. The last thing that I do want to bring up is something that I think most people kind of overlook. I don't know if wardrobe is the correct word, but when you're out shooting, uh, one of the simplest way to add like a tiny bit of extra interest or some color contrast is to wear or at least be mindful of the colors you're wearing. So if you see in my videos, I often wear uh, like red plaid, red shirts, that kind of works in a lot of the environments that I'm shooting in. The lots that I use the most, and I'd say they're responsible for a good chunk of, of the overall look that you see on my YouTube channel, are these from Cam Mackey. I'm gonna bring them up on this screen like so. They're 35 bucks and I think it's worth every penny. I mean, you're basically getting Cam Mackey to come in and be your assistant colorist. So to show you the difference, this shot here most likely was exposed and shot with the uh, Cam Mackey lot, but as an, uh, a little, uh, experiment here we can add the neutral phantom lot here which is another set of uh, fantastic lots it looks perfectly fine i mean it's a bit flat if you compare it to what you normally see on my channel which i think most of you will agree that this here is basically the colors on my youtube videos so that's pretty much it i mean we are getting a ton of bit more green tint here i think with all the foliage and everything here so we could go in here and just correct that or bring the greens down just a teeny tiny bit but honestly i think it looked perfectly fine uh, straight out of camera and i'm not super worried about the shadows getting a bit uh, crushed or anything uh, that's I, I think it looks absolutely fine for what it is so let's move on and take a look at these shots here this my friend john were out at a lake it was raining overcast kind of a miserable day altogether but we managed to get some nice looking footage so i will just add that uh, monitor lot here and by the way, if you didn't know, monitor lots, they're 32 or is it 33 point, 32 point. They're basically just a tiny bit simpler. There's less equations going on. But yeah, this looks perfectly fine to me. We, we are getting some of that green tint here as well, which I, I, I mean, we're looking at a ton of foliage here, both in front, over and behind. So same as we did before, we can just uh, go into our curves bring this down just a tiny bit like so with the computer i'm working on now i'm gonna leave things at like 70 80 percent there right i mean i'm not gonna super duper <laughs> massage the footage here but i think this looks pretty good here maybe we could bring it down just a tiny bit more around here and i think our colors are looking pretty decent here now we are looking a tiny bit hot here on the sky and normally i like to keep my my levels to around 80 ire here uh but Overall, I think this shot looks pretty good as is. So we can just hit Control C or Command C here on Mac, and we can paste those settings to this next shot here. Paste uh, attributes like so. 
And if we move over to this shot, it's basically already color corrected and graded and all that fun stuff. I mean, they're not 100% matched since we're looking at a backlit <laughs> shot on this one. And here we're basically front lit. So the level is going to be a tiny bit off. We could go in and adjust our contrast ratios and things like that to match them better. But I think in a situation like this, where it's clearly front lit and back lit, I mean, I, I, I can defend the difference here. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about a super duper shot matching this. Here's another example that I do want to show you when it comes to wardrobe. I'm wearing red and there's a ton of bit of greenery here in the background. Let's grab our monitor lot. This lot is going to get a lot of use today. <laughs> here we're getting the contrast between the red and the green here in the background. It just adds, you know, that little extra something. Uh, if we go back and look at this shot here of John, where he's wearing, um, I would call it more neutral color for the environment he's in. This obviously looks great. I'm not saying ugly shirt or anything here, John. I'm just saying that we're not getting the same type of color contrast here, which we're getting here with the red plaid shirt or jacket here on this shot. But to kind of circle back to that, always shooting in uh, 5600 Kelvin, here's a little clip that I shot for this company Valoret by the sea crashing waves and uh, we're at 12,800 ISO if we just apply that same lot here actually I would like to apply a different lot but let's try the north and then we'll switch to the cream and this just shows us that it's cold it's miserable but you want to be out there you want to shoot and uh, yeah, I just think the kind of coldness of the light captures that and it tells the story much, much better. So yeah, 5600 Kelvin it just does a lot of the heavy lifting here. Okay, here's another shot. I'm shooting some B-roll of me using this monitor. Let's see if we can, here's, I, I think there's a good spot to stop at. So look at this area here on my hand. Now, if we were to add that same monitor lot here, which is again, a slightly simpler lot, this we could actually actually add the 65 point lot which is a bit heavier we're touching cloth and we're pushing <coughs> outside of the 100 limit here so we're basically clipping this area if we go back to our curves here and bring down our overall exposure like this we're not fully able to recover the highlights in this area we're just making everything look a bit more flabby i guess so no matter how much we pull those down we're still not able to recover the details and the highlights in this area and that's because we're working after we've applied the conversion lot here. So we're technically making adjustments in an 8-bit Rec. 79 environment. We're not able to fully utilize the 10-bit 422 color that we actually use to shoot this shot with. So in situations like this, that's when I prefer to add a second instance of Lumetri like this and we'll jump over here and we'll rename this one the new one to uh, exp or exposure like that if we're dealing with multiples i might uh, name this one cst um, or base or something but the key thing here is to grab the exposure one we just created and put that on top over the basic one the cst now if we go up here to fx and select our exposure lumetri we're now able to make adjustments to the exposure working with that 10 bit footage as actual 10 bit footage so look what happens if we do the same thing here on the 10 bit footage on the exposure node here you see that as soon as we start bringing down the highlights, we're also recovering a lot of the details here in this area. And we can raise the mid-tones, we can lift the shadows here a bit and reduce our contrast if we wanna bring out some of this here as well, which isn't necessarily as important for this shot as some of the other things here. And um, also getting a lot of that green uh, wash here from all the greenery. So let's go ahead and bring that down just a tiny bit like so. And again, I mean, if we go back and look at the adjustments we did when we were in Rex of the Nine, we couldn't recover this here. They just looked blotchy and ugly. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have much more luck here. This is just too slow. The, the scopes and everything is just uh, lagging too much. But I do recommend uh, checking out those S-Log3 lots from Cam and Mackey. They're actually great. I will put links below, no affiliation whatsoever. But now I'm gonna go and uh, set up a fishing pond for a classroom Christmas party. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.